Good morning and welcome to the regular public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Tuesday, July 5, 2011. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved by Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The first item on the agenda this morning is social services. We have a request for approval of the community service agency contracts for 2011-2012 budget year. Our presenter is Angie Bailey, Social Services Division Director, Exhibit Number 1. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. Um, what we have this morning um, is a request here to renew service agreements for the several um, service, community service agencies that we have here in the county that provide services and programs to our citizens. And each year we uh, renew a service contract with them to provide these services based on the funds that we appropriate in the budget. Um, what I do want to note this morning, uh, you can see from your agenda package, the numbers have been adjusted according to the 2011-12 uh, budget reductions, and the, each agency has been notified accordingly. So the numbers you see before you this morning on the contracts are those adjusted numbers that we're asking you to approve this morning. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Arletta? Angie, uh, good morning. Um, in speaking with these um, agencies, uh, one of the concerns I had is if they did their budget on a calendar year and they were expecting the monies and we've cut it in half and then we spread this off over 12 months, mm -hmm. uh, have any of them expressed concern as to getting it in six months versus 12 months? Uh, no, sir. They have not individually expressed that they all have expressed concern, of course, at the reduction, but they all have said that they pretty much anticipated it based on what they've been hearing about the budget, and they will just adjust accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. We're going to take these each one of these contracts individually, and the first one is the agreement between Henry County and a friend's house in the amount of $53,125. I'll entertain a motion to approve that. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries. I'd like to abstain. Vote. 401 with Commissioner Holder abstaining. The next agreement is between Henry County and Community Gardens of Henry County Incorporated in the amount of $6,375, and I'll entertain a motion to approve. So motion by Mr. Holder, second. second by Mr. Staney. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next is an agreement between Henry County and the Flint Circuit Council on Family Violence in the amount of $33,150. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next is an agreement between Henry County and Hands of Hope Clinic in the amount of $10,200, and I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Auletta. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The final is an agreement between Henry County, Georgia and Helping in His Name Food Pantry in the amount of $10,625. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Auletta. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to public safety, the first item is a resolution requesting authorization to accept the grant for automated vehicle locator and approval of an agreement with the Georgia Emergency Management Agency. Our presenter is Chief Brad Johnson of the Fire Department, Exhibit Number 2. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, before you, the, the grant request to receive for the AVL system, a little background on this AVL grant. It started two years ago with GEMA and the Georgia Trauma Commission after the sugar plant fire in South Georgia. They were looking at a way to bring funding together from the federal and state level to be able to track resources in, account, in a, a major event, such as a sugar factory fire. And so they focused on the ambulances in the state. And their goal is to issue every ambulance in the state a AVL um, automated vehicle locator. It does several things for the state. It, they can turn it on when they need to for a major disaster. But for locally, it does a lot of things for us, too. It can be integrated into our 911 system when we upgrade it to our new, new building and new system where dispatch can actually see live data of where our trucks are. And eventually, with computer upgrades and software upgrades with a new system, it'll actually show the dispatch location, show the closest unit, and route that information straight to the ambulance. 
for quicker response times. The immediate advantage for us is the transmission of medical data, EKGs and medical information we can go straight to the hospital with. If somebody's having a heart attack or a, a myocardial infarction, we can transmit from our monitors straight to Henry Medical Center to a cardiologist or to their office where they can get on their iPad and they can meet us there for invasive procedures. The grant price is $49,810, which is paid in full. It's not a matching grant. It's uh, all inclusive. It was supposed to be a three-year contract with the uh, everything paid for three years. They've limited it to one year with uh, everything's paid, including airtime, through July 1st of 12. They're looking for additional funding through the Trauma Commission, so that might be extended. Uh, if July 1st, 12, we don't have funding for it or we cannot allocate funding, it, we can cancel at any time uh, this grant and return the equipment. I do think with private partnership, we're, we can get that money uh, with some other uh, partnerships in this project to make this happen even next year. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? All right, if not, there's a resolution before you, and there's one correction that needs to be made to the fourth whereas. It says, at which time Henry County can pay the monthly connection fee of approximately $11,000. That should read yearly. And with that correction, I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Uh, Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item is a resolution requesting approval on an intergovernmental lease agreement regarding a public safety center. Our presenter is Butch Sanders, County Manager, Exhibit Number 3. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board. Uh, you have before you an intergovernmental lease agreement which formalizes and finalizes our understanding with the City of Stockbridge for our uh, operation and occupancy of the new Harold L. Cochran Public Safety Center, um, which uh, the uh, grand opening was held last week. Um, a wonderful facility, and I would ask for uh, your approval of this uh, agreement, which is for a 20-year term with a 90-day uh, out policy if needed. Does any board member have a question or comment? Mr. Bowman? The 90-day is for either side, isn't it? Uh, Correct. And several issues that we had early on they have all been taken out of the leases to, at this time, correct? Yes, sir. Through uh, uh, negotiations with the city manager and I believe um, Ms. Wiley and yourself have uh, reviewed the document that's before you. I just want to make sure to get it in the record that uh, we yes, don't sir. have to change the air handling units at the end of our term, should it be three years or more. <laughs> so, correct. That's all. Mr. Well, Tony, you were involved in crafting this agreement, correct? It, and there were some details that um, Commissioner Bowman wanted clarified, and with the county manager's assistance, I think we came to a, some resolution on those issues. So you comfortable with everything in here? Yes, based upon my inf the information I received, and as long as Commissioner Bowman, we did remove the HVAC replacement requirement, um, and I think the rest of the agreement mirrors some terms of agreements we already have in place with yes. the city of Stockbridge. So yes, sir. Okay. I think, uh, Commissioner Stang, our part of, of it, basically, we're responsible for changing the light bulbs and the filters on the air handling units. Uh, once it gets past something of just general light maintenance, uh, any any equipment replacements, any any condensing units, anything anything structural, roof wise, any other thing would be handled by the city of Stockbridge. Are there any additional questions, Mr. Holder? Stockbridge has <clears throat> reviewed this also, and they are there. They were the ones who drafted the original document before we made changes to it. Now, I mean, have they reviewed the changed document? Yes, I've been in touch with uh, Mr. And are, okay, and they are they're okay with this. So they are, they're, okay. Any other questions, Mr. Stanley? Bowman, you said there was a 90 days on. You go on section <coughs> section two and D. It says either party to terminate this agreement with a sixty days. I you think the that? ninety day is the uh, um, under section, section thirteen. Three, section three D. You see that BJ in the top corner? 
Should that be changed to 60 or, I mean, 90, or do we leave it at 60? In, in Section 13? No, sir. Three. Section 3, D is in dog. Second line, so upon 60 days, written notice. Which section are you reading from, Commissioner Staney? Um, the very first section of the agreement. And right, uh, right above miscellaneous, right above four, you'll see either party may terminate this agreement without cause upon a 60-day written notice. I think I, the original one, that was... Because I have uh, in Section 13 termination of agreement uh, where there is uh, uh, failing to correct any default within 90 days of receipt. Um, yep. we, don't, we don't have a 13. We don't have that part. I just have all the way to, um, yeah. matter of fact, I go all the way to four, into four. Uh, Commissioner Holder has you see it? the full you see it? lease agreement in his book. I don't actually, mine just, mine actually stops at the uh, four miscellaneous, uh, and, you know, but I, I I had copies of it, so I didn't really need to get another one. I thought you maybe should, that was You good. should have a total of ten pages in your notebooks, and you do not? No, I got two pages of that at least. Okay, you don't have the full copies then in your, in your book for some yeah. reason. But you... Fence and repairs, Commissioner Bowman. Oh, this is I, on top of different ways. Look at tab four. Look under tab four instead of three. I think we just need to get each of you the full full document. Commissioner Stamey, that is the uh, uh, ten-page final document there that I, I handed to you. If y'all will look under tab four. It's tab exhibit four. four in your book. Okay. Mr. Alletta has a question. Um, the uh, This is a lease agreement, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And we're paying a half a million dollars up front? Correct. And if we terminate, it's non-refundable? That's the, uh, um, I, 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 I have not been here for the whole history of the agreement, but that's what it, what it came down to. Uh, the commissioner asked if it was non-refundable. Oh, the half million dollars? Actually, it's not because the uh, half million dollars is uh, FF and E. So if we left, we'd take it with us. <laughs> You know, the, the half million dollars, we, that, that money was put in there, correct me if I'm wrong on this, for the computers, the desks, the, all the equipment that we put, put in, or a lot of it. I don't know if it's covered all of it. But plus security measures. Plus security measures, yeah. So there was a lot of, I'm not saying that 100% of it, but a lot of it would take with us. If we left, we'd take our computers, we'd take our desks, we'd take our chairs, we'd, you know, there's obviously certain things you couldn't take. You know. what, why would we be paying the city this amount of money if we're the one providing or, or were they buying them for us or they're already there and we're buying the furniture you're talking about? Or? Well, this, uh, uh, Commissioner, this was a, uh, without going into a huge amount of detail, there were several things that went on during the course of this particular project. And uh, at first it started out with uh, uh, Stockbridge furnishing property and a million something dollars and uh, they were going to furnish the property for the uh, fire station, replacement fire station and for the police precinct. During that time the police precinct moved from here to, from different locations because they couldn't decide, the city of Stockbridge couldn't decide where they really wanted to put it and then the new, the old Cochrane Library became their court system. And when they turned that into their court system, it opened up the old city hall after they'd moved into the other city hall. So they had a lot of space that they didn't need. In order to make this work, 
they went ahead and built on to this space and renovated this space to make it uh, to make it the police precinct. At which time there were a number of things going on between uh, the county and the city. At which time this is that's the way the agreement was hammered out. I had probably I would say I probably had a dozen meetings at the time with Ted Strickland and with others in putting this particular package together as far as the police precincts concerned. So, um, you know, I, it, 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 at the time, it, it's changed 180 degrees from what it started out being. So we, what we've ended up with is we've ended up with a lot better location in the center of Stockbridge and uh, one of the things that I would like to add is that I talked with Captain Goins at our ribbon cutting. And at any one time during the, uh, during the 24 hour period, there'll be 100 plus or minus people in and out of that precinct. We're talking about uh, CID, we're talking about detect other detectives on other units, and we're talking about Uniform Patrol Division. So it's a win win win. You know, it's a win. It's a definitely a win for Henry County. I mean, for Henry County, I feel like it's a win because we've got a presence right there where we can respond a whole lot quicker than we could if everybody was located out of the city of McDonough. So it puts our north precinct in a lot better position. So uh, I, 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 to go into definite detail, you and I'd have to sit down and I'd have to really kind of tell you where everything went. But at the end of the day, we end up with the, we got the lot on Rock Quarry Road. And we're building the fire station. And uh, uh, I, there was other issues between uh, uh, Stockbridge and myself on that particular because we looked at four or five different locations that continually moved and changed. So anyhow, this is where we ended up. And I'll be happy to get with you at another time and kind of explain to you how the numbers went from one to another to another to another. Ms. Wiley, did you have a comment? Mr. Bowman, I wanted to, uh, in the board, I wanted to direct your attention to paragraph 10, page 5 of the agreement that deals with the maintenance and repairs. That was the provision in the, par in the uh, agreement that there was constant, um, you know, back and forth dialogue concerning, and I believe um, Mr. Sanders had discussions with the city manager in the paragraph 10 was the agreed upon language that I think um, they came up with dealing with maintenance and repairs. So it deals with structural portions. That's what the city will, will be responsible for. And that term is not really defined, but uh, the, the county will be responsible for all interior portions except for structural portions of the premises. Right, with that being maintenance and upkeep, that basically, you know, what that means to me and what I felt like it meant with uh, the city manager, Ray Gibson, was that we were going to take care of changing the filters, making sure all the units, the maintenance was taken on a regular basis. Uh, but any major, and when I say major issue, would be like a, a a compressor going out. You know, that we didn't put the compressors in. We didn't put the air handling units in. We don't have the warranties on those. They run as much as five years. Some of them may be longer. So that was something that they needed to take care of, and that's why a lot of that was changed, so that they would handle all of the major, and we would handle the quote-unquote minor, which is the light bulbs, the day-to-day day -to -day. Day -to -day light maintenance issues. I think then it doesn't say that per se. I think we had a, initially we had a dollar amount that, that distinguished between minor and major, and that was removed. But um, it doesn't say, I understand your intent, it makes perfect sense to me. The agreement does not specifically state that. So um, I don't know if we need to insert the word major repairs after structural portions in the agreement to alleviate any type of ambiguity in the future. Uh, if the parties intended that to be the case, there shouldn't be any problem with just putting um, and major repairs, except structural portions and major repairs. Of in the agreement. I don't know, Mr. Sanders, what your comment would be on that. Uh, we, we, had, we had talked about that, and uh, um, I felt like the 
language that we had come to was a, agreed upon by all parties. If we need to uh, go back and define that further, we certainly can. I, don't, I mean, really, if, if and one of the reasons for taking the dollar amount out, if we put a dollar amount in there, then obviously every time we turn around, we're going to go to that dollar amount. I, I really uh, felt like that, you know, by saying that we had, quote, unquote, the, you know, the data, I, we didn't spell out, okay, we're going to change filters, light bulbs, we're going to clean the carpet once a week or once a month or whatever. But that that's that's what we implied. It, that was my understanding. The way I read it, that's what we implied by it. So I was perfectly happy with it after we got the two major things that I felt like were major out of that agreement, one being us, that we were going to change all the air handling units. If we stayed there three years, any air handling units over three years old, we were going to automatically change all of them out. You know, that could be thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, actually. So, you know, that, those were the major things to me. And once we got those out, it, it reads pretty similar to a lease like I have on some properties that I own, so I felt like it was okay. There was also an insurance issue, which we clarified that we would cover the uh, um, the casualty insurance on the building, which I think we probably needed to. I mean, that was and that was a minor amount. Butch, was that not a couple of hundred dollars, or you know, just go on our uh, um, umbrella policy? Umbrella policy. So I mean, I, that as as the whole umbrella policy, that would be a minor thing. As far as ours was concerned, so, you know. Mr. Holder. I guess I would direct this comment to Ms. Wiley, but uh, to remove as many ambiguities in this agreement as we can would be for the best because even though it was the intent, or the, we don't need to get into he said, he said, he said, she said, and I know that can happen in time to come. Um, if it's HVAC units that are that, it, that are the concern, that needs to be addressed, in my opinion, in this document. Because if you don't, whoever's sitting in these positions three, four, ten years down the road, when these things do occur, and you don't have it in the document that says A is responsible for this, B is responsible for this, then somebody's going to start pointing fingers again, and we just need to remove the ambiguity. If we can, that's just my opinion. We can go back and revisit the language that we that we discussed earlier, I guess, in the previous form of the document. If that's if you've well, agreed in principle, right? Uh, on what you said, you know, the city and the yeah. county has agreed in principle on what who is responsible for what, and like it just needs to be put in this document so that. Uh, there are no questions about it down the road. And I think if, if that's the case, and I agree, Commissioner uh, Holder, I don't know if we can, if we have agreed in principle to that intent, then we can certainly put that in here now and have it approved. I'm not sure what your, what your pleasure is. Uh, I'd say we probably need to uh, clarify exact that, exactly that language, share it with them, and, and come back. I'd feel more comfortable there. So we should motion. Do I have a motion to table this item? Motion by Mr. Bowman. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5 0. The next item is a resolution requesting approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Stockbridge for the provisions of code enforcement services, and that's exhibit number three. This uh, agreement came out of a discussion with the city of Stockbridge where they had requested uh, uh, assistance in code enforcement. And uh, it was very good timing for us because we were looking at uh, a potential reduction in force uh, of a position in code enforcement. And uh, basically, um, this is a, uh, uh, an agreement between us and the city for a code enforcement officer, um, a Henry County code enforcement officer, working through uh, uh, Arthur Weems' department. And basically it is, it is uh, um, an agreement where the city of Stockbridge covers the full annual cost of said officer, uh, including salary, um, all benefits, retirement, uniforms, uh, vehicle use, and expenses uh, in the total amount of $49,707 a year. 
and I would ask that uh, um, because of their but their calendar budget year and also for uh, a need to um, review the the performance of of the agreement uh, that this be uh, initially set for a six month term uh, with renewals to to follow annually thereafter. Does any board member have a question or comment? Mr. Alana. Obviously, if this being a six-month agreement, uh, the $49,000 is prorated? Would be prorated. Okay. Any other questions? If not, you have before you a resolution establishing an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Stockbridge and Henry County for Code Enforcement Services, and I'll entertain a motion. A motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Alletta. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. <clears throat> The next item is a resolution requesting approval of a contract for web-based database of permitting information for the film industry. Our presenter is Julie Hoover Ernst, Director of Communications, Exhibit Number 5. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Throw this interesting slide up here on the other. As you can see, Henry County is beginning to attract some of the film and television production um, to, to our community, but we would like to do more to capture that $1.2 billion industry and, and, and bring it into Henry County. And um, we certainly want to do what we can to make sure that as we seek to bring that business into our community, that we do so in a very efficient and effective manner as possible. <laughs> And there is a web-based application database called Flips Film that is an inexpensive tool to help us better attract some of those dollars and uh, provide a one-stop 24-7 resource for the film and TV producers to arrange scheduling and permitting across time zones. And at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Dale Sizemore with Flips Film, who is going to give you a brief presentation and kind of explain what the uh, service is all about. Dale? Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Julie, and thank you, esteemed county com uh, other officials. Um, I had about five and a half years in the information uh, system integration business. Um, that's what I said to uh, last fall. That company was uh, acquired, and I decided to do something a little bit more uh, interesting for the state of Georgia. I read an article on December 8th that said government doesn't always make it easy for the film and TV industry who moves on a very fast track. Uh, as much as people want to do business, uh, it, it's very difficult to do it. The camera ready program that was instituted by the state of Georgia is a very good head start. It's a good intent, but categorically it does not provide tools. It provides extra workload for a countywide person, such as Julie to do that in addition to the regular job. And as a result, they've got to know all the nuances about permits and issues and who has to be contacted and under what circumstances. And as hard as y'all work, it's hard to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I created a technology after talking to economic development folks, film producers, and a lot of other folks, and put a considerable amount of money into this and said, I can fix this problem. I can give a 24 by 7, one-stop shop access to people who want to conduct business and spend money in your community, all without having to change what you folks do. I call it Flips Film. It's a service of information system integrators. That's my company. I'm a Georgia-based small business. I'm a C corporation. I'm headquartered out of Alpharetta. So it was built completely with Georgia resources, I might add. So other than having peach juice on it, it cannot be much more Georgia-based. Um, so I'd like to show you a little bit of what it means. By the way, FLIP stands for Film Location Intelligent Permitting System. I made sure that there was nobody else in the country doing this before I got started into it. Uh, it was very important from a business perspective. It was very important to be able to address this with my wife and tell her that this was not going to be something that could be easily replicated. So let me go through this real quickly. <clears throat> It's essentially a web-based software. It's a concierge service that helps people get everything that they need quickly in their hands so they can make intelligent decisions. 
when the film and production folks are trying to decide, I want to go to a community, they have to get the initial okay from that community before they can get insurance, before they can make travel logistics, before they can schedule the cast and crew. If they don't get a rapid response, they've got two or three of these reservations, if you will, hanging out there, and it drives them nuts, quite frankly. Uh, and as a result, we want to get the provisional information into their hands and say, okay, everything that y'all want and everything that y'all want is actually available to them immediately. Uh, it also avoids a little bit of a, a well-intended surprise that occurred in one metro county not too long ago where a, a TV show was brought into the community and they were all happy to be bringing the revenue in except that it was going to portray the county in a bad light. It was cops. And the commissioners weren't real happy to have their community portrayed for 13 weeks in a very negative crime-ridden environment. So we had one group of people very happily trying to bring revenue in. The other folks were uh, looking for torches and pitchforks. So uh, this is one way to get, provide one version of the truth to everybody in the community. This is actually described and, and been validated as a bit of an economic development tool. It creates new revenues not only for your community but for your community residents, <clears throat> both residents and businesses alike. It does no good for the hotels to know that there would be people coming in here if the restaurants don't know that there's going to be an influx of people. When you have 100 cast members for a recent production here that stayed here two weeks, uh, it would be kind of nice for the community to be able to know that. Um, so it's going to be able to generate day-to-day -day revenues. It can generate jobs as well. Uh, but more importantly, it's going to be able to provide a good reputation for you folks on an ongoing basis. The film producers that I've talked with, the folks I've read at the Atlanta Film Festival, all the messages are, if you make it easy for us and have fast, accurate permitting, we will gravitate to the path of least resistance. If you make it easy for us, we'll go there. Now, we can't create a special stone mountain or a special waterfall somewhere, and neither can you. But what we can do is showcase your community easier, better, and faster than any other option. We have some special sauce. This isn't just a plain old online, get your database off your website kind of an activity. I'm a little smarter than that, I like to think. So what we ended up doing was creating some special sauce. Not only can they find out what the policies are and make it easier for them to be able to film and permit and apply and coordinate in a community, they're also able to be able to find out, is there something going on in this community that would uh, affect my filming? And apparently this happened just a couple of weeks ago when The Walking Dead was here. They were filming, doing a good job, two weeks doing a wonderful job, and then they found out the drag races were going on, and that disrupted the noise. Well, that's actually one of the things that we have as part of our secret sauce, is to be able to identify for these production dates, set up production or tear down, is there something going on in the community that you might want to know about? Are the streets going to be closed for a 10K? Are you going to have the fireworks? Those kinds of things that would actually disrupt these people. Many of them are from out of town. They don't know our communities. It's hard for us to know our own community sometimes. So as a result, we want to pop this up, make it aware of, and, and let them go forward as well. Another part of our secret sauce is to actually let them know who the location-specific resources in the community. Who are the merchants that provide the sign barriers? Who actually does catering? If you've listed in the statewide directory of resources for film and TV and says you do uh, catering in the metro Atlanta area, Folks, I got up at 5 this morning to get down here, and I'd hate to think I was having uh, the responsibility of getting hot breakfast to all of y'all from Alpharetta. We're all in the metro area. Wouldn't it be nice to know who all the local merchants are in your community so they can say florist, security, uh, signs and banners and those kinds of stuff? That's what people need to know, especially for those that are not from uh, out of town. And again, they, it's available 24 by 7. It avoids mistakes and costly delays. There was another production, as I understand from talking last week with another camera-ready contact, uh, another major production was shut down for several days because they didn't have the right permits, uh, and that was up in north of the Atlanta area. So that resulted in scurrying off to the uh, folks out in California trying to resolve this with a, a local permitting organization. That's not making it friendly to come to Georgia, folks. And uh, there's $770 million dollars worth of filming done last year, over $700 million the year before. This is a problem. We don't want to jeopardize that. We don't have to be real right to be able to get an extra slice or two of that. 
The former Georgia film commissioner joined my company when he heard what I was doing. He said, there is nobody doing this at all. Same thing from a major film attorney last week. Uh, by the way, those delays that we were just mentioning, I asked him why he thought the estimate of the delays to the production companies were. He said about $400,000. He ought to know. He's been dealing with the film industry for most of his life. $400,000 worth of mistake and delays is what I refer to as conspicuous in someone's budget and in your reputation. You've got this description, basically, we do the permitting, we normalize the disparate permitting requirements, we, no we let notify the folks in your community based upon your policies and display them easily for folks to be able to get access to it. You still have access to all of your policies, you st still maintain full control, you're not uh, giving up any of your control. But what we do is provide better, faster, consistent notification so that everybody can have actionable insight very quickly. Um, at that point, um, you can change this on a blink of an eye. You have full control over this yourself. You don't have to buy one more piece of equipment, not a pencil. This is designed to work with everything that you've got already. I've worked very, very hard for five and a half years to understand how government works. You need, a, as I call it, a fresh new idea that's withstood the test of time. Something that'll allow y'all to be responsive, but without having to disrupt the apple cart. And that's what I've designed this to do, and it's very, very cost effective. Once again, it goes beyond the camera ready community program, which is an excellent program, but that designates one person for every city and every county policy that has subscribed to that. It's just very difficult for them to do that. Um, again, here's a little bit of a comparison between us and them. I won't go through those item by item, unless you want me to. I didn't think so. Um, these are some of the production uh, resources, reactions to this. Some uh, have actually signed up for it. Some saw this when I was building it. Some of them were telling things like, this will help bridge the communications gap that sometimes occurs between people out on the West Coast and other parts of the country. Um, whether that's, I needed a, a fancy trailer, or what do, what do you mean a fancy trailer? Um, I was driving around looking at uh, a home for the Billy Bob Thornton movie uh, one Monday afternoon, and, and bless the heart, Julie and Laura were helping me out uh, trying to find that out. These people have to work like that, and they're driving all over the place to do it. And we, they need all the tools that they can get to get that information in their hand. Let your resident put this into their uh, database. It, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. The film industry typically leaves a place better than they found it. I have been lobbying to have them come film at my house for as long as I can remember because I want them to fix it up and paint it up. It, it's wonderful revenue, it's short-term revenue. It's clean. You don't have to build a, a tax allocation district or extra buildings or set aside land. They come in, they spend money, they go away, and they're happy, and the reputation lingers and lingers. So it's a, it's a good fit for everybody. <clears throat> The last page is a kind of a behind the scenes. Um, we'll just go into a little bit more detail there. I'd like to read two, uh, two statements here from um, Director of Tourism from Forsyth County. They're looking at this as well. Thanks for the information. I do hope this will work for the community. It's a great program and a great asset to us for what we want to do with productions and partner with the state. Just makes sense to have someone who knows the logistics handle the details. Thanks, and we'll be back in touch soon. Tedra Cheatham, up in North Fulton, who handles six cities, said this would be very helpful for the communities as it would lessen the time spent with each inquiry. Thanks for taking the initiative to develop such a promising tool. We want to give your folks the opportunity to stay on task. We don't want them to be distracted. <clears throat> we want everybody who needs to know about a permit and a film coordination to know about it consistently and quickly. That's what we've worked uh, very hard to create. We have uh, discussed this at length with Butch Sanders and others in your community. Um, your attorney, Ms. Wiley, has done an excellent job of, uh, of giving me insight. We, as far as I know, last we said, I agree, and, and she hadn't come back and fussed at me. Are we, are we in agreement? Okay, we're in agreement then. So we've got all the working documents there. Um, I welcome any questions at this point. I like to just ask, uh, this is a nominal amount of money. Um, it was $300 uh, for the annual, annual, not monthly, <laughs> uh, the payment for subscription. And that just helps us, you know, keep this. $150 is what I've offered to you all for the first year. 
Are there any questions? Does any board member have a question? Mr. Arletta? Um, <coughs> Julie, uh, both of you maybe, but um, it, I'm not so sure I totally understand the permitting process of films and whatever else. Maybe that's part of the problem, but uh, it's a nominal fee and, it, I mean, to, to get exposure. I, Am I correct in my assumption that what we're doing here is finding a vehicle on a uh, to publicize Henry County, but it will be full of the same stuff that we pretty much would have now with the chamber promoting? It, it goes beyond the camera ready designation that we have in Henry County through the chamber um, by uh, including all of that permitting process and who to call if. Um, I, I, it's a one-stop shop that they basically fill out what they're doing, when they're going to be here, and um, what what kind of production they're doing. And it, the software database actually kinds of kind of figures out what kind of permits are, are needed, um, and it send, automatically sends an email to that person so that it gets it into the approval process. So the, so it goes quite a bit farther than camera ready does and you can probably do a better job. It, it really does. For example, um, in a particular location, if they were going to be closing streets, well, they would get additional prompts to say, is this a full street closure? Is this a sidewalk closure? Is it an alley closure? Or, or other things that are in there. And again, we work with y'all to define what those things are. Huh. And whoever has to be in charge of street closures, not just the chief of police, but maybe the public works folks as well. And you know, fire EMS or whoever is appropriate. They're also notified in, in detail so that they can have the right information immediately and everybody has a single person. I, I'm sort of lost for $300. I'm trying to figure out how you can take on a bunch of work that mm -hmm. we supposedly are doing or haven't done or need to do and the process gets completed. And what's different from today's process of getting permits versus this process, I guess, maybe that might be the question. The process for a, a production, a person, a scout. Right. right. Well, I'm, I won't speak for your county, I, but in general, what happens is someone will call a camera ready contact, her. Which would be Laura. <laughs> or Laura. Laura Luther and say, you know, we're getting ready to come into town as what happened a couple of weeks ago. Friday afternoon, 4.30, hey, we need to know who does uh, all the permitting uh, for signage, for directional signage to come into your county. Who, who would I call? And, and fortunately, she was available, but she may not always be available. And they needed to know for Monday, yesterday, to be able to start doing these kinds of things. Or a couple of weeks ago. So the timeliness and accuracy of 24 by 7 access to all the policies and things that are out there, that's not easily assembled. Not even on anybody's website in the state of Georgia, I looked. I looked at all the camera rated communities. It, it's very difficult to assemble all the right information. Second of all, the person who is contacted says, I, I need to uh, assemble the dialogue between the chief of police and fire and all that. Well, who do we contact if there's a street closure? Well, I'm not sure who needs to be, but let's try this one and try that one. What happens if that's wrong? Then it gets delayed and it gets shut down. Uh, it doesn't take many of these delays and reputational problems to, uh, for them to tell everybody in the industry. So everybody in a, an organization who typically is working with a paper-based policy or even an online permitting, uh, they mean well. But there's nothing that transcends the different departments to make sure everybody gets the right answer quickly. And if any of that stuff changes, people know about it quickly. And the web base is going to have all that information on it. So when they go to the web base, all those questions are answered. We've gathered most of that information already in anticipation of doing that with you folks. Sat down with Butch and Clark Rayner and a bunch of the folks and showed them what we've already collected. So My, my only concern, I guess, is if there is a concern, is Today we're somewhat of a standalone. We've got to put it together, and to the extent they want the answers, we provide them, and we'll have to provide them in the future. It's just that we got to get them, have them on this web today versus the calls come in. We don't have the answer. Sort of a checklist yes, is what I'm hearing. Yes, complete sir. the checklist, put it on the web versus not maybe having a checklist today. Um, from a competitive standpoint, if we're wanting to bring industry here and we put them on your website, are we not in fact? going from a standalone, which you have to find them, they have to find you, but when all these municipalities get on your website, we're now in strong competition as they go through everybody's um, available information, whereas today they may or may not have it. 
So, I mean, it's a sort of catch-22. In one sense, if you aren't, everybody is, and that's where they go. You're left out. But at the same time, if you do, your competition just increased plenty fold as right. information is now available to them. Yeah. Two, two comments to that, please, sir. Good observation. Uh, first of all, uh, those who are not on this would be left alone and, and not getting. And many of the camera-ready communities don't have a good policy by which they can uh, coordinate, be responsive. Um, second of all, the way we have talked with your organization is that if they went to the Henry County website and said, I want to click on film permitting, I want to do business there, and they clicked on that, it, it would be backdoored into our system and go right into the Henry County section of our system. So they're not going to be trolling through our system necessarily. They probably are going to come through y'all first. And then once you click on your website, it comes to us and the, the heavy lifting is done by our website. So you still get the branding of the Henry County part of it without having to, uh, to be overly exposed. But if the people are going to one place, and you're in competition with other folks now, the folks in DeKalb County, the folks in the city of Atlanta, and the other folks, there, there's folks that are doing this now. What we want to do is provide, A, more business to Georgia, and the more business that comes in, uh, the better the tide comes in, everyone's boat goes up. And the second part is, if it's easier to do business with y'all than it is with anybody else, the more of these guys are going to keep coming back here. It compiles it into a directory format, but it also enables the, the film producer who is looking to do business in Henry County the opportunity to complete a form, hit submit, and emails are automatically sent to all of the people that have to um, be a part of the approval process. So it simplifies it for everyone. It simplifies it for that film person, but it also simplifies it for staff because we're no longer running around trying to make sure that everybody was contacted. It does it automatically. Um, Laura uh, Luker is also here with the CVB. Um, the intent here was to partner with the CVB because it is, it, it, to, to a degree, it is tourism, but it is also economic development. We felt like going in together on this would be most appropriate because while it does bring in tourism, much of the information on the website is very strictly government related. And, and to put the CVB responsible for that information um, w would not be an easy task for, for that organization. So we opted to partner. They have said that they would pay $150 per year, which means that for this first year it would not cost the county anything, um, but it would be, would be paying each 50 percent thereafter. The county would pay 150 and the CVB would pay 150 toward the $300 annual fee for this service. Any additional questions? All right, if not, you have before you a resolution of the Board of Commissioners awarding a contract for web-based database of, permit, of permitting information for the film industry, and I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you all very much. <coughs> Appreciate it. Look forward to working with you. Thank you. Moving on to financial services, we have a resolution requesting approval of a window of opportunity for an immediate retirement incentive. Mike Bush, Finance Director, is our presenter. Handout number one. Good morning, Madam Chair and Good Board morning. Members. Um, we have a uh, program that we would like to provide to the current employees of Henry County. It's called an, uh, an immediate retirement incentive. <clears throat> this would allow employees who have their age in the years of service equal 80 <clears throat> points if they're 55 and 25 years of service, they'd have 80 points. They would qualify for this immediate retirement incentive. Also, they have to have 10 consecutive years of service. The other way to um, be a part of this plan is to be of normal age of retirement with 10 years of consecutive service. Based on those two different criteria, we had 72 uh, employees that qualify for this immediate retirement uh, program. And what we would like to do today is, if you guys will approve the resolution to open up this window of opportunity, um, there's a timeline um, that if the board approves today, then between July 6th and September the 30th would be this window of opportunity. 
Uh, people can people will come in. We'll send them a, a, a memo telling them that they're eligible, showing them what their estimated uh, and immediate retirement incentive would be, and then they would check a, uh, send back a, a form that says they are interested or they are not interested. If they're interested, then we run some numbers for them for retirement and for this immediate incentive program. And if they decide that they want to retire under this program, they have till September 30th to tell us they want to retire. <clears throat> if we give them this information, they decide they don't want to do it, that's fine. They don't have to. There's no, this is completely a voluntary situation. Um, uh, like I say, there'll, there'll be, uh, these forms will go out. Employees will have an opportunity till July 22nd to send a form back in to us stating that they're interested in, in information. We'll gather that information, give it out to the employees as a whole, and they'll have 45 days from that time where we give them that information to decide to retire. If they do decide to retire um, and they sign this stuff by September 30th, they must retire by October the 30th. Uh, this is also these packages, these two numbers I just gave you are, we said if an employee is going to be in public safety 55 years of age, and normal, which is normal age retirement plus 10 years of service as of December 31st, 2011. So some of the people may not quite be there yet between the time that they retire, but that was the way that, that we had seen other programs do it. So we went out there and said, if you're going to be, if you qualify for this program as of, as of December 31st, 2011, you'll get a package today and we'll be allowed to retire. This, this is an immediate incent retirement incentive. It has nothing to do with our GEBCOR retirement plan. If you are of normal age of retirement, you can retire. If you're two years shy of normal age of retirement, there will no, be no bridging of that retirement. So employees who want, who are of normal age of retirement, which is what most of these people are, there are some that are 58, but they've been here for 27 years. That's why they qualify with the 80 points. Some of them will choose to take this program because it's the difference in the time, it will be a very small amount of dollars per month. So we would like to get, let you guys uh, allow us to open up this early or this this immediate retirement incentive um, for the next three months, I guess is what it boils down to. Does any board member have questions. a question or comment? Just a Mr. Holder. Mike, you mentioned it, and I, mentioned, uh, I didn't hear it. How many employees did you say qualified for this? There's 72. 72, okay. Any other questions or comments? All right, if not, you have before you a resolution approving a window of opportunity for an immediate retirement incentive, and I'll entertain a motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Under Planning and Zoning Services, we have a resolution requesting authorization to extend the current moratorium regarding adult entertainment businesses to July 19, 2011. Our presenter is Michael Harris, Planning and Zoning Services Division Director, and that's handout number two. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Board members. On May 16th of this year, the Board voted to enact a moratorium for our, um, actually in, in January 18th, the Board enacted a moratorium for 120 days. We came back in May and extended that for 60 days. However, that 60-day extension takes us to July 15th. We have a regularly scheduled BOC meeting scheduled for July 19th, and we're asking us to extend that moratorium for additional four days so we can present that item back on July 19th. Does any board member have a question? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the extension. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Alletta. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Moving on to the approval of the minutes, other than um, grammatical corrections, are there any additions to the minutes? Okay. We're going to take these separately. We um, have the first two sets will be regular board meetings for June 7th and June 20th, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Mr. Alletta, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We have the June 7th call meeting, and Mr. Stamey, I believe you were absent for that, so I will entertain a motion for approval of those minutes. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Did anyone sign up for public comment? Mr. County Manager, anything for public session? No, ma'am. Ms. County Attorney? No, ma'am. Is there a need for an executive session today? 
Okay. At this time, I need a motion to uh, convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, personnel, and land acquisition matters. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. I need a motion to reconvene into public session. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? All in favor. Motion carries 5-0. At this time, I need a motion for approval of an affidavit and resolution pertaining to executive session. So moved. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. If there's no further business to come before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Holmes, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We stand adjourned.